So you're curious how you go about installing Fedora. Well, grab a flash drive because I'm going to show you the entire process right now. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be setting up Fedora as the only operating system on our computer. That means you should back up everything that's important to you before we get started, because by the end of this video, we'll have our very own Fedora installation set up and ready to go. So what we'll be doing is converting a flash drive into Fedora installation media. We'll boot our computer from that installation media, and then we'll proceed to install Fedora. Best of all, I'm going to show you the entire process on real hardware. That's right. On Learn Linux TV, I always use real hardware for all of my tutorials, unless I tell you otherwise. If that's something that excites you, be sure to subscribe. And the real hardware that I've decided to install Fedora onto is this ThinkPad X1 Carbon. This has been a very good laptop for me, so I can't wait to see how Fedora performs on this computer. But before we get started, I need to make sure that you guys are aware that the official Learn Linux TV shop has been updated with brand new products. Inside the shop, you'll find distro-themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. And if you're a fan of Fedora, then be sure to purchase the By the Way I Run Fedora t-shirt to let everybody know what your favorite distribution is. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's install Fedora. The first thing we'll do is open up a web browser. Doesn't matter which one. And the next thing we'll do is navigate to the Get Fedora website, which is located at getfedora.org. And here we are at the official Get Fedora website. Now, this particular website can change from time to time as they release new versions. But what we want to do is download whatever the latest release happens to be. As of the time I'm recording this video, the current release is version 40. As an aside, I do have a full review for Fedora 40 if you want to check that out. Anyway, what we want to do is find the download link for Fedora Workstation. And here it is, so I'll click Download Now. And once we've done that, it'll take us to this page here, which will give us the opportunity to download the Fedora Media Writer, as we see here. Now there is a Mac version if you need that, but I'm going to download the Windows version. And we can see that it's already downloaded. So let's open that up. And here's my downloads folder. And we can see that the Fedora Media Writer has been downloaded. So I'll double click on it. And here on the screen, we have the Fedora Media Writer. Now, next, what you'll want to do is insert your flash drive into your computer. Now, keep in mind everything on that flash drive will be erased. So I'd like you to back up everything that might already be on your flash drive before you continue. I've already done that off camera, so I will click I agree. I'll click install. And it's done. So I'll click next. And I'll leave this box checked to run Fedora Media Writer, and then I'll click finish. Next, what the tool is going to do is download the latest release of Fedora for you. It's asking you how you want to go ahead and download Fedora. I recommend just leaving it on download automatically because that's easier. We'll click next. We'll make sure that we are downloading Fedora Workstation. That's what this tutorial is for. I'll click next. So version, we have 40. Now, if you wanted to reinstall an earlier version, you could do that, but I'm going to leave it on 40 for the latest version of Fedora. We'll leave this at the default here. And then for the flash drive, you'll want to make sure that you choose the right one. If you have more than one, you could choose that here. I only have this flash drive, so the only one I can choose is the only one I have anyway. So we could click Download and Write if we are sure that we want to continue. This is going to transform our flash drive into installable media for Fedora, and that's exactly what I want it to do. So I'll click download and write right now. So it looks like everything is all set. My flash drive should now be converted to installation media for Fedora. At this point, what you should do is reboot your computer 
and what you'll do is select the flash drive as your boot device. The process will vary from one computer to another, but for those of you running Dell, it could be F12, for example, that's very popular. That'll activate the boot menu on most Dell computers, and then other computers will have a different key at startup that you'll press to access the boot menu. At that point, you'll choose the flash drive that we've just converted into installation media for Fedora, and then your system will boot into a live Fedora environment. And here we have Fedora. Believe it or not, we are already running Fedora. We have yet to install it, but we are already using it. How's that possible? Well, our installation media, the installation media that we just set up, that doubles as live media, which means that Fedora is able to run live from the media, treating the USB flash drive as if it was a hard drive. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to let you know that I have a brand new Linux course available, and if you're looking to get certified, then this one is right up your alley. Over on Udemy, I've just launched my first ever certification prep course, and this one will teach you everything you need to know in order to pass the Linux Essentials exam and become certified through the Linux Professional Institute. And with over 200,000 certification holders, LPI is the first and largest vendor-neutral Linux and open source certification body. Any certification through LPI is a credential that will definitely be an asset to your career. And my brand new course is a perfect tool to help get you there. With my Linux Essentials course, you'll enjoy over 23 lessons that will teach you valuable Linux skills. Each video will keep you engaged while breaking down each and every topic into easy to understand concepts that will make even the most challenging topics seem simple. In addition, you'll be able to follow along with hands-on examples that will have you working directly with Linux commands and technologies. Even if you are not planning on becoming certified, the Linux Essentials course from Learn Linux TV is a great way to get into Linux in general. So even hobbyists will benefit from this course as well. Now don't worry though, this new Udemy course doesn't change any content that you've been enjoying here on YouTube. My new and completely separate venture on Udemy is designed to help boost your skills even further, and meanwhile, the videos here on YouTube will continue as they've been for over 10 years now. So check out my brand new Linux Essentials course and pass that exam. I would really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. Now if we go up to the upper right hand corner here, to the system menu, and we click on it, this shows us our various system controls. Of special interest though, we want to make sure that we have internet access. I don't have a wired ethernet connection, I do have Wi-Fi. So what I could do is click on the arrow to the right of the Wi-Fi icon here. So I'll just go right here, click on this icon, and then all we have to do is click on the wireless network that we want to use. So I'll click on this one, I'll type in the password, and that should do it. Right here I see a Wi-Fi icon, so that means I'm connected. I can confirm that right here by dropping this down again, and I see my Wi-Fi name right here. So if I open up a web browser, which I could do by going up to the upper left-hand corner, or I can press the super key on the keyboard, and that brings up the activities overview, and then of course, I could click on Firefox. And then what we could do is visit any website, so what I'll do is go to my website, for example, and there it is. Another thing I could do is watch a video just to make sure that my sound card is supported, that I'm able to watch videos in the first place. Basically, I have a chance to make sure that everything works. Anyway, what I'll do is close this here, and we have this Welcome to Fedora screen, and if we want to proceed with the installation, we can click Install Fedora. Or if we want to just use Fedora in demo mode and we don't want to install it, what we could do instead is click Not Now, and what that'll do is make this window go away so we can continue to use Fedora. But my goal is to install Fedora, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'll click Install Fedora right here. And that brings up the installer. On this first screen, all we have to do is choose our primary language, and this is the language for the installer itself. I'll click Continue. And then here I could choose a different keyboard layout if I need to do that. I'm not going to because it's already correct in my case, but if you need to add an additional keyboard layout, you could do that here. I'll click Done. Next up, what we'll do is click Installation Destination. Now on my end, I have this hard drive right here, so that's what I'm going to use. It's the only one that I have, and it's already selected. Now I already have a Linux installation on this disk. And in your case, you might have a Windows installation on that disk or some other operating system. So it'll say something like you have a small amount of space free, even if that's not technically true. 
What that means is that the entirety of the hard drive is owned by your other operating system. That's an oversimplification, but basically that's what's going on here. So what we'll do is click done without making any changes. And what that's going to trigger is that the Fedora installer is going to recognize that we don't really have enough space here on partition space for another operating system. So this just isn't going to work. Basically, this is expected. So to resolve this, it's really easy. We click reclaim space which is basically telling the installer to erase the entire hard drive. And that's what I want it to do. I'll click delete all, and then finally reclaim space. So now this particular section is satisfied, we can move on to time and date, which is the next thing that we should configure. It's going to attempt to automatically detect this for you. It detected it correctly on my end here, so I'm good to go. If you want to change this, you can, but I'll just click done. And then what we'll do is click begin installation. Now this is going to finalize everything. And if that's not what you want to do, or if you forgot to back up your files, now's a good time to cancel the entire process and go and do that. But if you are ready to go, I'm ready to go. So let's go. All right, so it looks like the process is complete. So what I'll do is click Finish Installation, and we should be able to reboot our system and see if it works. So let's do that. And to reboot the system, what we'll do is go up here to the Control Menu. We have a power icon here, we'll click on that. And then we'll click Restart. All right, so I've rebooted my system and I'm ready to go. And the first thing that we'll see is this screen right here. So we'll click Start Setup. And we have some options that we could choose here. For example, Location Services. Basically that controls whether or not you could use mapping applications and things like that. You know, things that use GPS, your location. You could disable this or enable this based on your preference. We also have Automatic Problem Reporting which is on by default here in Fedora 40. You can leave that enabled if you'd like. I'll leave that up to you. I'll click Next. Next, I recommend that you enable third-party repositories. This will give you access to additional software. It's not required, but I do recommend it. Now the software in this repository might have restrictive licenses. For example, maybe a license that might be restricted in some countries, or perhaps a patent disagreement or something like that. Nothing that I think anybody watching this video would probably care about, but if you do care about licensing, you should probably look into that. But anyway, what this will do is give you access to things like Google Chrome. So it is something that I do recommend that you have available. So what I'll do is enable third-party repositories right now by clicking this button. And now we see that it is enabled. If I change my mind, I could click on it again to disable it, but I do want this, so I will enable this. And we'll click Next. And here, what we'll do is enter information for our user account. If you have an enterprise login system, you could click this button here to go ahead and configure that. But what I'll do is click Next because I don't have that currently. We'll set a password for our system. I'll enter it again. And this is going to be the password that you'll use to log in anytime you use the system. So Make sure that it's secure. We'll click Next. And that should be everything. So we could click Start Using Fedora to get started with our system. And now that we are using our installation, we'll have this one-time thing that shows up here. It's going to give us a tour. So what I'll do is click Take Tour. And what this will do is give you some information about features and things like that. So, so I'll just click this button here to move on. And it tells you that you could press the super key or you could click on this icon right here to access the activities overview, which is what it's talking about. Next. And this tells us that there's search capabilities that we should be aware of. Also, this is letting us know that workspaces are a feature of GNOME, a feature that I like. And to show you what that looks like, if I click this button here, I could go over here, there's another workspace. I'll click on it. Now I have another workspace. 
I can have an application open on this workspace. You can have more than one application as well. But you can have different workspaces for different things. You have a little preview up here. I can go over here to my first workspace, back to my second, and so on. You get the idea. So that's what this is trying to let you know about. I'm not going to do this right now because my lid is closed on my laptop and I don't want to open it because I'm recording footage from it. But basically what this is telling you is that there's mouse gesture support here in Fedora. So if you want to try the gesture that you see right here, feel free to do that. Same with this one here. You could change workspaces with gestures, which is pretty cool. Anyway, it says that's it. Have a nice day. You can close the installer, and I just saw a message up here that we have critical updates. So why not install those? I'll click on that, and you'll see the process of installing updates in Fedora, something that I should show you anyway. So here we have GNOME software, which is what we use to install updates. Now, if you did not get a message up here, and I don't have it anymore up here myself, but if you don't see a message to get to updates, what you could do is go up here to your activities overview, and open GNOME software right here, which is this. And then you go to the updates tab, which takes you here. So what I'm going to do is restart an update. I should probably do that anyway. And that's the first thing that you should do anytime you install Linux. So I'll click on that. And then what I'll do is click restart and install. And we'll let it finish. All right, so far so good. My system updated and restarted, so we should be able to log in. And I'll log in. And we're all set. My new Fedora installation was freshly updated, my system rebooted, and now it's ready for use. And with that said, today's video comes to a close. I hope you enjoy your brand new Fedora installation, and thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. Anyway, be sure you subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.